Hello and welcome to my presentation on achieving responsive and sustainable manufacturing for a brokered agent based production paradigm. A paper for the International Conference on Sustainable Design and Manufacturing. My name is Dr. James Gopsell. I'm Senior Research Fellow for the University of Bristol and the Centre for Modelling and Simulation. So in this presentation today, I'll just give you a bit of our background and motivation for, for doing this bit of research, the methodology in which we followed that came up with the drivers for new production paradigms and then going into uh, how we might meet those with our, our you know, proposal of a brokered additive manufacturing paradigm. I will then summarise with the key conclusions from our paper. So just a bit of background, we know that like I said, the global landscape and product market is rapidly changing um, and continually changing. So it's always good to reflect upon you know, what are the drivers and needs uh, for society um, for production. Um, we also know there's a load of new manufacturing technologies and digitalization is presenting a load of new opportunities in how we might configure and develop new production systems. So we just wanted to investigate, you know, what is driving the need for new manufacturing systems, even if there is one, and how we might, you know, deploy new manufacturing technologies and the uh, elements of digitalization to might meet those needs. So the method we, we employed was a, a review of industry and academic and uh, newspaper literature with searches including like the challenges in production engineering in 2020, the lessons learned from the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, what the 2020 production landscape is looking like right now, and what we, people are talking about when they talk about responsive manufacturing and sustainable manufacturing. We then followed a four-step thematic analysis of familiarising ourselves with the, the, you know, the literature that we've gathered, uh, independently coding that literature, and then reviewing that to, as together as a set of, 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 of my research colleagues and defining the themes in terms of drivers for new manufacturing um, uh, you know, systems. And then we've reported those themes within our paper. So our first one was a uh, big demand, which we had as a play on uh, you know, big data. We've uh, rapidly changed uh, We've seen lots of rapid changes in demand, highly localized, uh, massive variety in those demands. Uh, driven by mainly the need for like mass customization so we see like these new trends um, appearing maybe for pop just through popular media uh, and people then wanting those products uh, maybe it's like a new movie that's been released but that's driven those uh, trends for new products in a very short space of time and also it's across the globe so you know you see that now with you know the advent of the internet we are seeing those trends appear and sweep across the globe in a very much uh, you know much more quickly than ever before so we need our manufacturing systems to be able to react to those emergent trends and needs for those products uh, based on society you know society's demands uh, equally there have been like say these massive events and we still see these to, to this day COVID-19 is a perfect example of this uh, in the UK we've had Brexit uh, we see disaster response uh, you know commonly occurring still you know on a you know, you know, annual basis, financial crises, wars, these massive events that drive a sudden change in demands for us from society uh, for particular products. And of course, we need our manufacturing systems to be able to almost in an instance be able to cha change and meet those new product demands. And that's uh, been a challenge for maybe more of the, you know, traditional production systems where they are designed, you know, have been highly optimized and designed and focused to develop and produce a particular item you know automotive industry is a perfect example of this uh, where it's highly tuned into to producing automotive components so they rapidly change to produce something else you know needs a new manufacturing system to be able to achieve that and complement those systems sustainable production is also another driver you know minimizing and our net zero carbon footprint um, you know we've you know, evolved and have these massive global supply chains and impressive logistics uh, to be able to move parts and components across across the globe. But of course, that that movement of parts and components and materials really you know impacts our carbon footprint. So it's how we might uh, combat that with new manufacturing systems that might be able to produce uh, more locally um, and just move minimise the movement of materials. Um, Equally, the unequal international dimensions of austerity have, um, uh, have helped, you know, have enabled these global supply chains. 
but um, how we might, you know, if we want to equalize those, then again, we might need to look at new manufacturing systems where that movement of being able to produce cheaper in um, different locations may not be the case in the future. And we've also seen production constraints, brand, brand new ones that we've probably never seen before with like the need for social distancing, um, COVID-19, the tier system that we had in the UK meant different uh, areas in the UK had different uh, constraints at any one point in time and our pr production um, systems needed to accommodate those accordingly. Um, and in some cases it was very difficult for, the, for existing uh, manufacturing systems to do that. So again, there's a need to have, you know, generate new manufacturing systems that accommodate those changes. Um, the ever given in the Suez Canal is again, there's another change, like you say, where the, the logistics was impacted greatly by the, um, the blockage in the Suez Canal, again, leading to issues in our production. So how can we mitigate those? How can we uh, produce um, and have mitigations in place in our manufacturing systems? And there's also this driver for uh, manufacturing independence we're seeing. So again, like I say, our globalization of manufacturing capability has led uh, more for an access to rather than ownership model. So what's been amazing is that you know we have uh, you know many of the uh, countries are able to access manufacturing capability in other countries, uh, such as like say China and the US, um, and that's made us be able to manufacture products. Um, and have design teams design products um, independent of really having to worry about the manufacturing capability locally because they can manufacture using the global uh, supply chains. But that necessarily also impacts, like you say, we have a potential over-reliance on other nations to provide that capability. And when then there's different demands or there are uh, different constraints, uh, maybe posed by trade negotiations, then that impacts our ability to manufacture and produce the items for our societies. So maybe we've moved to a more too too much of an over reliance on access to. So there has been this driver and need. Um, one example in the UK is reshoring UK, which is a drive to kind of address that balance to get the right balance of manufacturing capability, both in house and then access to the, the global manufacturing capability. So again, manufacturing systems that can utilize local manufacturing capability but also access uh, global manufacturing capability um, is uh, you know a, a keen driver so those were the the four drivers that we we uncovered by reviewing the literature and then the work that we're doing at the university of bristol is looking at a new production paradigm uh, what we're calling brokered agent-based manufacturing that might meet those uh, looking to meet those drivers the paradigm is kind of encompasses of, of three elements, uh, the additive manufacturing, the enabling te technology um, that we're investigating, how we might then coordinate that manufacturing capability through agent based manufacturing needs. And then also the idea that actually, you know, whilst we might be able to coordinate that production, we still need to broker the deals and make sure that the consumer supplier relationships are there, um, that we can actually, you know, that's it, um, you know, make the deals happen and people actually commit to producing products through such a manufacturing system so just to briefly cover those now so of course i'm sure you're all aware of additive manufacturing um, the enabling capability as we say for this paradigm um, additive manufacturing is a you know it's it's used across industry um, and in education and in homes so it's a very interesting one it's highly distributed a manufacturing capability more so than any other capability that we've had in the past and one of the things that we're looking to do is how we can network that up so it becomes a, you know, here, for example, in the UK, a national capability or even up to a, you know, global capability. And we also, you know, understand that there's loads of needs from industry and consumers, again, distributed, highly distributed across uh, across a nation. So it's how we might want to try and capture what the needs are of that nation and then how we can map that across that manufacturing capability that is spread across a nation. Um, and in different places, industry, education and homes. And what we're doing, how we're looking to do that is through agent based manufacturing. Um, so one of the capabilities, um, opportunities with AM is that, you know, most and the majority of the technologies uh, use, um, you know, uh, STL files, you know, CAD, uh, the same CAD geometry um, to then model and then produce the manufacturing code. And also look at very similar G code to actually operationalize that and manufacture those products and components. So what that gives us a, a, the capability to do is actually, I'd you know, say, most 
users or designers um, who are going to put in jobs for products and for components for parts they can all submit the, the, you know the same file types the same geometry um, and then we can actually offload the you know analysis of that geometry to the machines themselves um, so those what we're saying there is the machines become agents and then ultimately the, the the governance of those machines be it the the industry the universities the uh, schools or even the home users who own those um, machines can that put their own logics uh, and drivers for what products they want to manufacture from a global queue so it could be the first come first serve it could be of a certain size um, of course certain material types um, so they can then query that queue and then the the actual machines themselves can bid for jobs so we think an agent-based manufacturing paradigm is a real opportunity here to be able to have that global queue understand what the global needs are for for a nation and then for the machines themselves to coordinate amongst themselves and bid and take those jobs and manufacture them so we're looking at that and um, figure uh, on the right here is just showing how actually how the system dynamics behaves with different logics within that we're trying to un understand how what kind of logics need to be within that system and how that uh, behavior changes depending on different demands that are put through the through the system but not only that, of course, you know, we might be able to coordinate that. And if, if um, but actually, we also need to understand how we might, um, you know, monetize that and um, broker the deals between the people submitting those jobs and the machines that are going to be bidding for those jobs. Um, the opportunity with this agent based, um, you know, manufacturing paradigm is that it might, you know, lead to some more kind of amorphous supply chains that can react. Uh, in an instance uh, so when a, a big demand for a product goes in maybe a collaborate you know collaborations can come and go as uh, these machines come together in an instance to meet that demand um, so you'll you know you'll have lots of bids and how they come together to bid for that uh, work so we're looking at learning from like the likes of amazon uber airbnb and delivery who produce innovative brokering solutions for their for their respective markets and how we might be able to do that in the same kind of thing for uh, the AM community, so how we can bring those, you know, dis distributed manufacturing capability together uh, to meet the needs as and when um, they arise. So in summary, for our, uh, our paper, it was very much about, you know, uncovering those four drivers of big demand, sustainable production, production constraints and manufacturing independence, and then also alluding to a potential solution and the work that we're doing at the University of Bristol in terms of developing a brokered additive manufacturing solution that might meet, meet those drivers. Um, so thank you very much for listening. I very much look forward to your questions and uh, yeah, very much looking forward to collaborating with, uh, with the research community further. We're very keen to open source uh, the code and the modeling that we're doing, um, developing the tools that we are to investigate this novel uh, kind of brokered additive manufacturing paradigm. So thank you very much for listening and yep, look forward to, to your questions. Thank you very much.